Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 was 2009's most anticipated release and its most controversial due to the inclusion of the mission No Russian. It generated an extraordinary amount of discussion in the gaming community and revulsion across traditional news outlets thanks to its brutal depiction of an airport massacre which puts you at the centre of the carnage. The question I want to discuss during this video is, is No Russian only famous for its shock value or is it shockingly well executed? No Russian puts you in the shoes of undercover CIA agent Joseph Allen, working under the alias Alexei Borodin, who has been tasked with infiltrating a terrorist group led by ultra-nationalist Vladimir Makarov. This man Makarov is fighting his own war and he has no rules, no boundaries, he doesn't flinch at torture, human trafficking or genocide. He's not loyal to a flag or a country or any set of ideals. He trades blood for money. To complete his objective, Alan has little choice but to join Makarov and his crew as they attack Russia's Zakayev International Airport, named after Imram Zakayev, a major antagonist from the first modern warfare. Proceedings begin with Makarov uttering this infamous title drop. Remember, no Russia. The only build-up before things rapidly spiral wildly out of control, it's both a reminder of context, Alan himself is no Russian, and one of the team's goals, they do not wish to reveal themselves as Russian. Makarov's massacre begins almost immediately, and it is undoubtedly shocking in its execution. The events you witness are absolutely nightmarish, a visceral spectacle of senseless violence few games have dared replicate since. Dead bodies are piled high in every direction, and the wounded drag themselves along the floor, leaving trails of blood behind them, while those injured are propped up against any surface they can find, often unable to escape before they are dispatched permanently. It's an incredibly frantic, gruesome affair, with people being gunned down in the foreground, screams of terror ringing out in the background, and debris flying everywhere. You're also only able to move at a slow, steady pace, making the mass murder occurring practically impossible to ignore. By the time 2009 rolled around, extreme violence in video games wasn't anywhere near as controversial as it had once been, thanks to the emergence of series like Resident Evil and Grand Theft Auto. To still garner plenty of attention from its use then, developers really had to make a concerted effort to be particularly sickening, and developer Infinity Ward goes that extra mile. It has been stated many times over the years by members of Infinity Ward though that there was good reason for the mission's inclusion. Level designer Mohamed Alavi said in an interview that the goal of no Russian was to give Russia good reason to attack the US, and to create an emotional connection between you and Makarov in a memorable, engaging way. Writer Jesse Stern also echoed that second point, stating that the aim was to bridge the gap between you and the monsters who commit such atrocities. Those two metrics provided by Alavi, I think, are a good way of judging whether the barbarity on display is reasonable. If No Russian has solid narrative justification and provides emotional weight, then it should be considered a genuine success beyond the outrage. If it is lacking in those areas, it becomes difficult not to think of it as a thinly veiled attempt to gain publicity, and thus an unnecessary addition. Irrespective of the outcome we arrive at, there can be no denying that it has been shamelessly used for publicity many times. In fact, it was the subject of an entire teaser trailer in the run-up to the game's release. Remember, no Russian. Some 14 years later, its legacy has continued to prove useful as well. The recently revamped Modern Warfare 2 teased similar scenes during its post credit sequence to build hype for the next game. Although it was ultimately for naught, with the end product being a pale imitation. Taking a closer look at No Russian, I think the cracks in its foundations soon begin to show. Infinity Ward warns you that there will be disturbing content and allows you to skip it entirely if you wish, and a similar option is also presented in the pause menu during it too, in case you change your mind after starting. Both are completely reasonable choices to offer, as the level is one which might have a profound impact on certain people, but it also raises a big question mark. Namely, if it can be skipped without too much being lost, is it really necessary at all? 
It's definitely necessary in as much as there needed to be a reason for Russia to attack the US. Without provocation, nothing happens and there's no story to tell. That being said, there are a million and one other ways that conflict could have been incited which would make a lot more sense than an airport massacre, a particularly dicey subject in a post 9-11 world. The reasoning, it moves the story forward, isn't strong enough justification and I refuse to believe the controversy Infinity Ward must have known it would generate didn't have a certain allure. If the build-up to No Russian was done properly, that would at least go some way towards invalidating my assertions though. You play as Alan during two of the three levels prior, SSD for basic training and team player as you battle to save a stranded army combat team in Afghanistan, and whether that adds enough weight to Alan's death soon after is going to be a matter of opinion. During the briefing, Colonel Shepard talks about the mission's cost to Alan's and the importance of that cost. You don't want to know what it's cost already to put you next to him. It will cost you a piece of yourself. It will cost nothing compared to everything you'll save. However, we never learn enough about Alan or spend enough time with him that the idea of sacrifice for the greater good comes across as anything other than lip service. What we get is nowhere near enough, especially in a game like Modern Warfare 2 where events move quickly and characterization therefore takes time. If we're being totally honest with ourselves here, there really is no proper explanation as to why exactly Alan has to participate other than the flimsy excuse of because it will get him close to Makarov. It means the gratuitous violence for me does little other than evoke disgust. It's a linear sequence of appalling events that could have been conveyed just as easily without you being complicit. You are able to choose whether you open fire on civilians yourself, but rather than this provoking the moral quandary some have suggested, to shoot or not to shoot, it feels like something of a cop-out. Alan not shooting would in reality make it painfully obvious immediately that something was wrong, in no world would it not be noticed. Based on later events, we know it's highly likely Makarov knew Alan was a plant prior to entering the airport, but Alan himself was not aware of that. If Infinity Ward truly believed in what they were doing, the proper choice would have been for you to not have one yourself, with Makarov or one of his team turning on you if you didn't join in the carnage. Where Call of Duty's usual bombast makes sense, war is an explosive, terrible thing, here a lack of forced participation comes off as a calculated risk, one I think was designed to soften people's reactions. It becomes clear when you look at the trilogy in its entirety that each title desperately endeavours to be more shocking than the last. Modern Warfare features horrifying scenes of Sergeant Jackson crawling around and eventually expiring in the aftermath of a nuclear explosion, Modern Warfare 2 has no Russian, and Modern Warfare 3 has the Davis family vacation which features the death of a child. Aftermath is somewhat delicately handled, but the other two feel like attempts to continue being more and more outrageous, rather than considered additions which add anything of real value. When it comes to controversy, Infinity War definitely mastered the how, but I don't think they really managed to master the why. No Russian second half doesn't do it any favours either. It concluding right when the slaughter was over would have made for a poignant ending. Unlike most other missions, there would be no final act of heroism or a grand set piece to sugarcoat the ordeal you've just been through. Infinity Ward, however, just couldn't resist sprinkling in a little of what makes Call of Duty so famous, with a final sequence pitting you against wave after wave of SWAT teams. It hugely detracts from the experience. Any hope of a somber, thoughtful ending, one which left you to consider what you'd witnessed and your involvement in it, disappears in a flurry of gunfire and grenades. No Russian's first half is much more memorable, but its second is considerably more engaging gameplay-wise. That means by the time it ends, you'll likely be in no different a headspace than you are at the end of most Modern Warfare 2 levels, blood pumping as you bask in the thrill of the fight. A twist ending is thrown in too as Makarov shoots Alan and reveals he knew he was a double agent all along, with his death to be used to provoke war between the US and Russia. Hold your fire. Get in. We've sent a strong message with this attack, Makarov. That was no message. <laughs> this is a message. The America thought he could deceive us. When they find out by, all of Russia will cry for war.
Unfortunately, it's too little too late, and it doesn't make much sense either. If Makarov is so dangerous, what possible reason could there be for the US to not only decide not to kill him straight away, but to allow one of their own to be part of something so heinous? We do at least come to understand by the end of the game that it was all part of Shepard's plan to spark conflict, but the idea that no one else looked at the operation and thought it was a terrible idea before it came to fruition is bizarre. Infinity Ward's goal was to create an emotional connection between you and Makarov, the villain of the piece, but because of how everything is handled, you just end up feeling somewhat sympathetic to the Russians' plight. After all, they're quite justifiably appalled by what's taken place and react appropriately to the information they have available to them. The US, on the other hand, sent someone to help massacre Russian citizens. It's difficult to feel sympathetic to their plight, even if Shepard's machinations were ultimately the reason for it. In amongst all the violence and explosions, I wonder whether buried somewhere within No Russian and Modern Warfare 2 is the message that war is pointless, the game a commentary on the unnecessary death and destruction it causes. Look at this one mission alone. The US is complicit in an American killing Russians, or at the very least being present and doing nothing to stop the bloodshed. Russians kill Russians, a Russian kills an American, and those events lead to Americans and Russians killing each other on an incomparable scale. It's a complete mess. It's a shame, then, that none of that comes through enough during No Russian itself, with it feeling somewhat pointless in its execution. A setup which lacks weight leads to a level which feels disjointed, one that tries to leave a lasting impression but sadly cannot help but revert back to the classic Call of Duty formula before its conclusion. Is it shocking? Absolutely, there can be no denying that, but I can't help but feel that if it were replaced by something less controversial, it wouldn't be greatly missed. Thanks for watching the video, boys, girls and soldiers. I know the subject matter was a little grim this time. If you enjoyed it, do consider liking, subscribing and sharing your thoughts. And hopefully, I'll see you all again soon.